last part to filming with Hilary Don Herrera. We've been going over acrylic and now this is gonna wrap it all up. I strongly recommend if you haven't watched part one, two, or three, go check it out. And if you guys have liked content like this, go ahead, like, and subscribe. We would love to produce more of this content. Anytime I can get Hilary to come to our training facility is always a good day. So like, like, like. Okay, we're gonna do free edge shaping. I like to use the coarse diamond hand pile. I feel like bigger job, bigger tool, right? And acrylic's really rigid. So it'll just get it done fast. So go in, make sure it's separate from the skin, and I'm just gonna tidy up and I kind of rock in as I go. Just to see so how that little clip. Yeah, you don't want you want a little bit of a transition there. Make sure we're going straight out from the sidewall. And then make sure you can see what you're filing. Don't file blind. No blind. Nope, turn them, tip the nail down so you can see. Ooh, squeaky. We're still gonna tuck in our sidewalls, but then we're going to file the free edge shaping a little bit differently. So I like to take the diamond hand file, find the center of okay. the first knuckle and come down through so you know your center point that you're shaping it to. Yeah. If they have very, very twisty fingers, which we all have twisty fingers, I'll sometimes go to the second knuckle, connect it to the first and come down so I can see what center I'm pulling to. Great, because it's center of the finger. It's gonna give you a balance because nails can look different this way and this way. And when they go this way to this way, they twist. So you wanna find one that's gonna be kind of great from both angles. So that helps me. And because this file is so narrow, you can still okay. kind of see your point, yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna put my finger to support it as I pull on this side, put my finger to support it as I come in on this side. And I'm just watching from the top. And we'll just give you a pretty little so smooth. Yeah, the diamond hand files make it really nice. And then you're not coming in with a thicker file that is too pushing their cutting it in. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and distorting their the lateral groove, the shape. I've seen yes. a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's some bulk over here, almost like the acrylic had pancaked a little. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we're gonna use a bit to Ooh, get there. So you use? could go in and like try to be doing this, but risk hitting the skin and all of that. So there's a couple options, probably the shaper okay. to really like yeah. create a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll use some top filing okay. and make sure that we're creating that smooth transition from cuticle, stress zone, and then tapering down. So this one is laid down pretty much the thickness we want. Think of it like a little thicker than a dime, but not as thick as a nickel. So when we go in and top file, what we're doing is we're making sure we have a transition here that's okay. smooth. So when it grows out, they don't have a ledge. Like a stair step. A stair step, they're gonna pick at it. Also, when you if you apply color or whatever, that's just not gonna be a very pretty no. look. We just did beautiful cuticle work. We want to still have it. And then we're coming to our stress zone, which more product lays there. Let me twist you a little bit. When you press down on the free edge, there you go, where yeah. it has that capillary refill, that's where the pressure's going. That's, that's your stress that. zone. That's why you have more product there. And then we want it to taper down a little thinner. So there's not a ton here. So we're gonna do, let's start with a diamond barrel. Yeah. You can also do a sanding band. Let's mm -hmm. just see what, what feels good. Oh, let's talk about why you're not using a carbide. Oh, great question. So carbides are gonna scoop and remove their adjust. Think of it like a bigger tool. I don't have a ton to debulk, so no need to go in there with something more aggressive. Right. And you have a greater chance of reducing too much and then you play the catch up. And, and before you know it, it's like I'm adding products. Way longer service. So you're gonna wanna look at it for top filing from the side first. And you're gonna lay your bit flat with the product, meaning I'm not carving in, but I'm watching my shape for my stress zone. So I'm just going through the center and watching from the side. I'm gonna to turn to the side and come up here. I can't get super close because it's a bigger bit, but then I can look down my barrel and make sure our sides are nice and tapered. It's going thinner, thicker, thinner across this seeker. And then from over here, also coming down and transitioning it. 
so we don't need the carbide. This will go through really quickly. I still don't, I'm not a big fan of like scrub, 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 especially if you don't have a ton to take down. It's just kind of counterproductive. And what you're doing right now is a replacement versus like the buffing blocks where you're taking that, are you still gonna use a buffing oh, block? No. Yeah. I do everything with my bit. I do. I use bits as much as possible so I don't wear down my hands. Like I get to choose how long I do nails. My body doesn't dictate it. So our goal here with thickness is you're going to be, you want even thickness on your tip, but when it comes to your sidewalls, you want to be a thinner amount of product to a thicker amount of product tapering down or beveling down to a thinner so that you don't have that bulk on the side. All right, we want to create a better transition from this acrylic to the nail plate. So I'm gonna take this shaper. This is a carbide. It has a very rounded tip here, so we're not gonna be tearing up anything. A safety tip. Yeah, that's a great word. It's a safety tip. What speed do you like this one at? Um, I don't do acrylic. I'm gonna start at 12. And if I feel like it's like not doing it, I'm going over and over, speed's gonna go up. Carbides work really well at higher speeds. But this one is just getting the job done. I have a little bit of bulk over here, so I'm going to increase my speed. Now I'm at 16,000. Now, again, I, I'm not flossing. I'm just keeping the tip towards the skin. And it does have that safety, so I'm not chewing anything up. So I hear people call this also sealing, like yeah. sealing the cuticle. And yeah. what they're referring to is just that the product isn't touching tissue right and your the goal is that your product doesn't touch tissue ever Correct. when applications going down but things happen all right let me dust this off so we can take a little look at it looky 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 so there you go we've got the thinner thicker thinner thinner thicker thinner how do you feel about it my little acrylic newbie it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're driving your car, make sure you're okay. not crashing. Like don't look at your nails. I, like, <laughs> I was like, wait, I have a nail now. How do I do this? Tap, tap, tap. Oh man, that's just going to be a problem. <laughs> at this point, you would go ahead and put your color on. So if you're doing normal polish, like mm -hmm. air dry polish, mm -hmm. I would buff it to get a smoother surface. If you're going to gel, we want to marry a softer product with one of the hardest products, which is acrylic. Mm -hmm. So in order for those to play we need some texture yep. it works really well so you don't want any of the dust on there so I'm really thorough about that mm -hmm. but now that there's no dust we can go right to color you don't need to put a base coat nope. straight to color and then you can do your art or no art and top coat and you're good to go awesome all right I'm gonna go at 30,000 rpms I like my carbides you fast too, girl. it just feels like butter I'm gonna come up around this curve first I'm not going all the way in I'm just making contact smooth and I'm debulking. So smooth. So smooth. So I'm going to watch from the side and then come along these hips. You ever heard it called that? So if product kind of builds up right here on that curved yeah. side, it's like the hips and that's what looks like a wider nail yes. when you're trying to create the illusion of a more narrow. Get rid of the hips. Get rid of the hips. Take the hips in. Take the hips in. Yeah, so just pay attention. You're not Here, dragging through them. I kind of do a curve and pull. So it looks like that. And on this side, it looks... You're following through. So yeah. So it doesn't look like all of a sudden it's flat. Choppy. Yeah, you don't want it to be choppy. And then I'm going to bevel my edges. She's so pretty. Yeah, she is pretty. I'm going to switch out to the shaper because I really want to transition okay. that zone um let's go a little faster mm -hmm. we have a little more to go i'm gonna go at about 20. Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna come up and really and you can kind of see it seal that baby down mm -hmm. oh yeah then you don't have a cliff that your color goes down and falls off no no cliff now and then it floods into the cuticles and it's a whole thing so shaper bit Tip towards the skin, yep, transition. This is our bulky nail. This happens to every nail tech, and you're going to lay down product or it cures too quickly, or your client shifts their hand, or you shift their hand, you walked away too soon. It just happens. It's, yeah. It just happens. It's Even part the, of like mm -hmm. the rite of passage. It is. Who hasn't had a thick nail? 
So this is the acrylic now that you made me ruin my soul to build bulky, but it happens to everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody ends up with a bulky acrylic or gel. It happens to everybody, so we need to know how to debulk it. So first thing is you're going to step it up in your grits of your tools. And you're not alone. We've no. Everybody has this happen. Even the most experienced. You look away for a minute, something sets up. It happens. So I'm going to pull the coarse yep. diamond hand file. I'm going to tuck in my edges. Just a little tuck. I know that there's some bulk that I'm going to need to use the e-file, but this helps me kind of gauge what I'm going to transition your edges down to so they're not bulky. When you do free edge shaping, really stabilize that nail plate on. So that, have you ever had people say they get sore nails You've after a full it. set? When you're not stabilizing and you're just yanking that nail plate around, it's on top of a bed and it can get really sore. So just stabilize. Don't be afraid to like hold them in place and then go. It makes in. it easier to file too. You don't yes. have the nail bouncing around. You're not chasing things. Let's give you a little bit of soft edges on this guy. So we want to step it to a coarse bit. So we're going to go with a coarse round top. It gives you a little bit of safety there. Cool. But we need to be able to take down the bulk. And if you're using like a fine or a medium, you're just going to wear your bits down and your arms and take more time and your hands. It's just all around. No bueno. It's just too much work. Yep. So I'm going to slide in. Now I like to run this at a very fast speed. It's going to cut like butter still, but you're just going to really pay attention to what you're doing. So I want to watch that side silhouette of shape for my apex. So this is going to need to come down right here. This is too bulky. And then down here, if you look right there, I'm going to come across flat there. So we'll start up here and work our way down. It may take a few passes and that's okay. So I'm coming across. I'm stabilizing her. So I'm holding, I'm holding you pretty solid but it's comfortable right oh i feel like it's just firm like firm and like we're we're connected not this little like i'm not squeezing you to death no but also death. i'm the one who moves you and if you have a really loose grip that's more likely to wiggle and funk around the world yeah that stresses everybody out yeah we don't we don't i mean if you want to do that for family i mean I maybe can't. not it's against my soul <laughs> i already made you against your soul it once. will it I'm will so i mean it's gonna happen to people it's happened to me. Okay, so I'm working down that massive amount of bolt. How do you feel with the feedback like that the bit is providing? How does it feel like in your hand? Smooth as butter. Butter, butter. Butter, butter. All right, we're already looking better. So now it's like pancaked like a little plateau. So I'm gonna come down these sides and I'm actually gonna watch like I'm looking down the barrel mm -hmm. so that I can see what I'm doing. And I can see I want a little more transition, but that's a smaller space, so I'll use a smaller size bit. Okay. Oh, here's a fun little tip. What's up? If you feel like there's more bulk than you want, maybe a little more thickness, but you feel like your client needs that uh -huh. to support their lifestyle, uh -huh. right? But you don't want it to look super thick. Instead of coming at the free edge totally straight like this, what you can do is take your bit at a little bit of an angle and you're just gonna slide underneath there and it creates the thinner illusion but you still have your support of the product so let me show you what that looks like so we can take it from looking bulky to a little bit like if you're looking all the way down you can see that thickness but it'll give them the illusion right there of a thinner nail So one thing we run into with anything that has kind of a round shape is sometimes it can be overly accentuated like right here versus if this gets taken in, it creates a really sleek look. I like to do it with my bit instead of fighting doing it with your hand file. So anytime I'm doing a shape that requires a little more finesse, I'm going to sketch it all and make sure it's all cleaned up with my hand file and then I'm gonna use my bits to taper down the side so you don't have a cliff. How much of your service would you say like that's like with filing or shaping is done with an e-file? Like what percentage? I would say I only I only use hand files for free edge shaping. 
everything else is my bits because I can graduate them to really fine. I can change the shape to fit the situation. You can even use the adjustable mandrel with the sanding band if you just need a barely bit of shaping, maybe just even texture before you put yeah. gel product on. I do most of it with my e-file. Um, one thing I've noticed is when we're right-handed and we're pulling from right to left, so it'll be opposite for our lefties, mm -hmm. our teeth are spinning this direction. And so if we get too close to this free edge, it's going to catch and whip you around the world. Okay. So what I like to do is imagine there's like an imaginary line here where it is actual free edge versus attached to the plate or to the bed. Mm -hmm. And so I will come up where it is attached and then I rotate for this edge and actually pull towards me instead of trying to pull straight across as that's when we catch. Yep. yep. And then we walk down. great time too. Hey, leave us comments below. Let us know if you have any questions. And of course, let us know what else you'd like us to cover when we're together. I love it. And um, does I this mean, mean you're going to do my other hand? No. Oh. <laughs> if you like content like this, go ahead, like, like comment, comment, and subscribe. subscribe.